to another episode of web learning where knowledge is shared. In this episode I'll show you how I built my own digital microphone. If you saw some of my previous videos you saw that sometimes I had trouble with the microphone and with the sound. Today I'm having some problems with my voice as I lost it and it's just coming back after a few days that I couldn't speak. After a few videos I made I kept on having issues with my analog microphone. At the end I decided to build my own digital microphone as the others that were on the web were really expensive. If you'll see uh, a quick Google search, the microphones that uh, most of the people are using are digital, but they're really expensive. Some of them cost uh, 50 or 100 dollars or more. I tried a few of them. I tried this one and it sounded like this. I also tried this one and it sounded like this. At the beginning I thought it was the computer, but after trying a few of them I saw that the actual there is an actual problem with the analog and uh, after trying a few times using those devices I kept on seeing that the problem with the analog. So at the end I decided to do my own digital microphone and this is what I've built. This tutorial will be in two parts. One is how I built it and what I used and the second part is the actually me building it. You can jump directly to the build how I built it on the right corner of the screen. So let me show you how I did this. It all started when I saw that SD has a really good example with the Xcube Mems Make 1. It's a demo that shows how to use the digital microphone with one to up to four mi different digital microphones. There are extensions to this library that I'll show in other videos. So after reading this information, I saw that I needed to use the Digital MEMS microphone expansion board. This one. Now as I didn't want to pay for this for no apparent reason, even though it's not that expensive, it only cost $15, I decided to go straight in the head and try to build it with simpler parts. This demo board is using the MP34DT01 digital microphone. If you go to the ST web link of this part, you see that it sends you back straight back to the demo board. But except for this, there are two other demo boards. Those demo boards are highlighted in the actual big demo board. There's the STVAL MK129VX and the STVAL MKI155VX. The VX at the end is because there are a few options for this demo board. There is V1, V2, and V3. V1 is for the MP45, V2 is for the MP34DB, and the V3 is for the MP34DT. The difference between the two is this one has a bottom part hole, and this one has a top part hole. So I can go and choose the top part hole. If you can see, this demo board has four microphones that, that you can break them out, and then you can use them, each one by itself. Even though this board is much more expensive, it fits more to my needs because I had to solder the microphone directly to the headpiece. So what I did is I bought a very low cost microphone, analog microphone, that I, I could take apart and rebuild it to my own needs. The digital microphone fits right here in the mouthpiece and a few wires are going back to the headpiece and then straight to the board. This is how I tested it. The code uses a USB directly to the computer. Then there is the USB that I use to debug the board. And then the microphone sits right here for the testing that I did to make sure that everything is working fine. Here in this picture you can also see it that I tested the board to see how all the connections are working in order to make sure that I'm doing it correctly before I solder anything. This is how it looked at the end. I used a small micro USB port that's mounted on a PCB. I'll leave a link below. 5 volt PCC and ground that is being su power supply to the SD board from the computer and the digital microphone cable comes directly to the correct pins. So the best way to build this board was to actually take this small PCB connect it to the STM32L053 that I have and test it out before I build it. In order to find how to connect this, I had to go back to this board and to see how they connected the microphones that are built already on them in order to copy the 
connections and make sure that everything is working correctly that was intended for. So opening the schematic of this demo board, I search for the first microphone and here it is, M1. And I look for the M for the MIC clock, the MIC PDM, and the MIC PD for the left right, VCC and ground. The D out and the clock are quite easy because it's an I square S connection. Then left and right, I wasn't sure how to use it, so I had to refer to the data sheet. Looking at the data sheet of the microphone, we have VDD, left, right, clock, D out, and ground. And I wanted to be sure what I'm going to do with the left and right. So, as you can see, this is the usual connection of the high square S, and the left and right is a connection when you have two microphones and you want to use the I square S to transmit both data. One is left and what one is right. As you can see, that number two pin of our left and right, one is connected to VDD, one is connected to ground. This is how it determines which one is the right channel and which one is the left channel. The left right pin must be connected to VDD or ground. So I'm not able to keep it floating and I had to connect it somehow. And this is how I connected it. I took the small demo board and I connected the left right pin to the ground pin right on the board. Then I connected the ground to my nuclear board right to the ground pin that's on the morpho connector, CN7 morpho connector the ground. I did this all the way to that side because I had to connect the VDD of 3.3 volts to the microphone. Then I connected the clock to PB13, that's the I square S clock and PB15, that's the data of the I square S. Then I took a small micro USB PCB, the link is below, connected the D minus to PB11, D plus to PB12, the VBUS connection, the 5 volt that I'm receiving from the PC to the E5V connection and the ground next to it. Going back to the picture, you can see that the D minus D plus of the USB the VCC and ground connected to the E5V and I also moved the jumper of the PCB to the E5V this determines if you receive the voltage from the ST-Link debugger or from this pin and the ground from that side of the microphone I connected the clock and data for the testing I connected the wire of the left right to a ground or VCC and then the VCC in ground. I can tell you now, for my testing, this pin needs to be connected ground. So after I made all the connections, I went and I've downloaded the software. After unzipping the folder, I double click on the folder, I go to projects, multi, application, microphone streaming, and as I'm using Kyle, I'll go to the MDK arm. I'm using the L053 demo board. And I double click. You need to be make sure what demo board you're using. I took the L053 because I showed you most of my demos on it. And also on the SD, this part doesn't need a crystal to connect to the USB. So I don't need to add another part to the nuclear board and it will work as is with the USB connection. As I'm using one microphone I need to find out exactly where are the settings for one microphone and not four. Because I need to find out how to use one microphone I'll go back to the mem MEMSMIC page and I'll open the user manual and in it I can find all the information that I need to operate one microphone. As you can see you can choose between one or two microphones or different microphone settings on this demo board but because I'm using one small board I just need to find the connection and the settings in the software for one microphone okay so in this user manual you can find on page 11 the audio related firmware components are mainly con concentrated in the audio application.c USB audio if.c going back to the software after finishing the compilation you can see all the files under audio application.c there is audio application.h and inside audio application.h you can see the audio channels as a default 
its two channels. Here I can remove the two and write only one because I'm using only one microphone. Your sampling frequency is the frequency that I sampled my audio. The rest you can leave it as it is. Compile. So after running the code, after after changing the to my one microphone and compiling it, for some reason I'm getting an error, undefined symbol IAR sin in PDM filter O. And for some reason it's asking me for IAR while I'm using Kyle. If I go to PDM filter, this is the section. For some reason the default of this project version 1.30 has uh, Cortex M0 IAR.A and this is wrong. To change this, we right click manage project, project items. If we go to middleware audio PDM, this is the wrong file that we need to change. If we'll search for this file, we can see if we'll search for this file, we can see that it's under middleware ST STM32 audio add-ons PDM. And here you can find all the different PDM filters for Cortex M0, M3, M4, and M7. If we'll take the if we'll look for the Kyle Cortex M0, we can see that there is a file cm0 underscore kyle.lib. And this is the actual file that we need. So going through this folder, I can find out that there is, is the lib. We'll click add, close, remove the IAR by clicking the X, click OK, compile, and that's it, the zero arrows. Now we can download the code and we can test this. As you can see in my settings under sound recording, I can see that the microphone and it's working quite well. It shows up the SM32 audio streaming in FS mode. This of course can be changed in the software to any name that you'll give it. The name is the only part that you can change. Other options, you don't need to change them unless you know what you're doing. Another important thing to do is that under advanced, make sure that you have one channel 16-bit. If you're using two microphones, then this should be two channel 16-bit. If you want to test this, you click listen to this device, click apply, and you can hear yourself on the speakers. This is the level that you can control how much is the microphone gain will sound like. So after loading the code and testing it, everything was working fine, it was time to build the microphone. So what I did, I took this microphone and I connected only four wires, the clock, the data, the ground, and the VCC. I used a low cost headphones that I didn't need anymore because with the headphones you have four wires, two for each speaker. This is the red wire that you see from the headphones that I cut. Under this sponge, there is a microphone. Four wires are connected. Then I drilled inside the back piece here. The speaker, I'm not using it because I need all the four wires all the way to the L053. So I resoldered all the wires inside and used the gray cable all the way to the board. So here you can see the gray cable coming in and connected to a four wire. I've connected it really strong here because if I pull, because the wires are very thin, um, I didn't want them to break if I move it or, or pull by mistake. So the I squares are coming to the right side of the board and the 3.3 in the ground of the microphone are coming on the left. Then you have the USB connector. The two pins are soldered to give it some strength and the ground and the VCC are connected to the other side. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this. Subscribe to, the, to see more videos. And here I'll show how I build the, the headphones. Thank you. Well, I started taking it apart first of all. I moved the PC speaker. Then I tried to cut open the connection there to see if I can put all the wires inside. This is the headphone wire that I had. I took apart some of the pieces and I started disassembling the board that I tested and connecting the microphone. I used two wires from one side 
the, the other two wires from the other side. This is how it looked like. You can see the green wire in the middle. That's the left right uh, with the ground. Then I super glued the microphone to the connection. I drilled a hole and I put the red wire through the speaker in the back. I connected everything back again. I removed the gray wires from the speaker and I connected all four wires to the gray cable. I used some tape to um, isolate between the different wires. I put it all together. I test the connections between the microphone and the wires before I solder them because I wasn't I was wanted to make sure that the other connections are correct. I soldered the gray wires and then I connected the gray wire from the headphones to the four wires I connected. I used some uh, shrink wrap uh, to connect the wires and made sure that there are no shortages between them. Then I did the same thing for the USB. And this is how it looked like at the end. I put the sponge on top of the microphone, I put the speaker back on, 